Hi all, Mass Barnkopf from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we are building a new capacitor discharge bank. Now I lost my high voltage capacitor back when I did some mobile phone explosions and that kind of killed the capacitor after some 200 discharges. So today we are making an experiment with taking these 20 large power factor correcting capacitors from Wishe, which are three phased. Let us look at the most interesting ratings. We know it's a Vichy Esta PHMKP 403 12.5, which is 400 volt AC, three phased power phase correcting capacitor. This is rated for 415 volt AC. We have three times 82.9 microfarads, and it is three phased delta connection. So uh, let's uh, skip over to the datasheet to see what all these numbers mean. To understand the datasheet, let's first look at the low voltage capacitor terms and definitions. So uh, this is again for Wishe, and if we go down here, we will need this UCN, which is rated capacitor voltage. And the delta connection, of course, means that the three capacitors is connected in a delta connection and not the Y connection. This is the actual datasheet for the capacitors that I have. And as we can see here on the quick overview that we have some different ranges on these capacitor type. It is MKP, which is metallized propylene film capacitors, which is absolutely perfect for doing short circuit current experiments. They are rated for a maximum voltage of 8000 volt and not really stated if that is AC or DC, but as we scroll down here to the standards and technical data, maximum voltages we can see we have a test voltage terminal to terminal of 2.15 times ucn ac so we had 415 volt ac times 2.15 that gives us a good 900 volt and since that is ac we can easily double that to a dc figure so we are up around 1700, 1800 volt DC that we can yeah, put on these capacitors. I want to put DC voltage into a delta connected AC capacitor and that gives us a few issues. We have a terminal here, here and here on top of the capacitor and I would like to put in a plus and a minus. So how can we do this? Well, we will have to short out one capacitor and short two terminals and we connect that up to minus. And then we have two capacitor elements parallel in one capacitor that we can go to the plus with. So we will have to do with only two of the capacitor elements in a single capacitor. I will use my MMC capacitor calculator and here we can write in that we have the, let's just say, 83 microfarads per capacitor. We had to put two in parallel, two elements in parallel, which gives us some 186 microfarads. And we determined that it could do a max of 1800 volt DC. And we have 20 of these capacitors. So I am contemplating that uh, maybe I should put two in series and then 10 in parallel. So that would give us a capacitor of 930 microfarads that can be pushed to 3600 volt DC. Let us put those numbers into the capacitor energy calculator. We had 930 microfarads and at up to 3600 volt DC. That would give us 6 kilojoule of stored energy. Now a rectified mod or micro oven transformer will give out something in the range of 3200 volt DC. And just for the ease of things, I will just use that without, without any voltage doppler or a need for a variag and stuff like that. So we'll end out at around five kilojoule, which is absolutely perfect for exploding wires and doing experiments in that manner. For the mechanical construction, I have a plate that is a roughly 40 by 40 centimeters. And on this, I could fit all 20 capacitors when they are interleaved like this. So uh, let's go into the workshop and get the plate prepared and wire up all the capacitors. To make sure that I did not have any short capacitors or defective capacitors, 
I used my LCR meter, DE5000, to measure them out. And while they are rated for 3 times 83 microfarads, they all measure out somewhere between 106 and 117 microfarads on each of the three capacitor elements. Which actually means that we have quite a lot more capacitance than first anticipated, which brings us up from something like 5 kilojoule energy stored to 7 kilojoule. So maybe we don't have to charge these to as high a voltage as I planned. And when we are talking about the plan, the plate I have does not accommodate more room than I have to put them in like this, which makes the wiring a bit more, yeah, complex. So uh, by using this element and this element, putting these two in parallel, I can make a bridge between one that is 180 degrees, turn the other way, and I can bridge these two in parallel. And by that I can just do one single bridge over here, and the same for this part. But the last part here will have to be a bit of uh, wiring go going over here and there. So we'll need a bit more insulation here to ensure we don't have any flash over. But um, let's get the plate drilled out and these wires made. The capacitor bank trigger mechanism is uh, pretty simple. It is a solenoid pulling down a arm and we have a spark gap over here. We have one wire going to the positive part of the capacitor bank and we wire that out to the one output terminal and the other output terminal connects directly to negative. And let's just try the trigger mechanism operated by 230 volt AC. The high voltage supply consists of a microwave oven transformer putting out 2050 volt AC. I have a full bridge rectifier made out of half bridge bricks. We have a 1 milliamp DC current meter sitting over here and then we have the charging resistors sitting over here. 15 kilo ohm diode modules are these uh, half bridge modules. So they are already wired in series, so that's why I can make a full bridge rectifier with two in series, like this. And that gives me some 3.5000 volt rating on each string. Now, since the meter up here is a good old 1 milliamp DC meter, I made a string of resistors over here, totaling to 3000 800 kilo ohm, so 3.8 mega ohm, and by Ohm's law, that should give uh, us a max reading on this meter at 3800 volt DC. And to calibrate that out, I'll use my multimeter over here, measure up to a thousand volt, mark here, measure the AC volts it's in, and then just do the math to do the rest of the markings. Varig is on, so let's raise the voltage up to 1000 volt DC on the multimeter over here and then do a mark on our new scale here. So. Okay, something made a weird noise. My uh, good old Fluke 77 here burned out at some 300 volt DC. It is rated for 1000 volt DC, but uh, yeah, that smells pretty bad now. So let's try with a new meter. So we are quickly climbing up to 500 volt DC here. And we want to very precisely hit one kilovolt. There we have it. That's um, 117 volt AC in on the Variac. 
one kilovolt and by that we just need to mark that out on the meter here. I have all my protective cladding. It's uh, acrylic plates all around the capacitor bank and spark gap and explosion area. I'm going to sit behind a metal plate at the other end of the workshop, so I'm completely out of line of sight of anything from this. So right now, charger is connected. I will uh, charge it up. For now, we will go for 2.2 kilojoule. I marked that on the piece of tape above. That's roughly uh, 2 kilovolt. So let's go for that. As a first test, and then we will go for maximum voltage. Firing in three, two, one, go. Foil in place, placing charger. Charging. Something sounds uh, like it's sparking. Might be the voltage limit of the capacitors. So we're doing a test at two and a half kilovolt. Discharging in three, two, one. Wow, that's scary. Can crusher is in place. Charging to two and a half kilovolt. Removing charger. Discharge in. Three, two, one. A few highlights from the can crushing here. I only laid the copper wire to rest on the two bus bars here. And it's wrapped around two times here and four times over here. And there is just, yeah, shrapnel everywhere. And the can itself. Crust, um, yeah, not as good as expected, but a pretty even and very nice uh, can crushing here. So uh, overall, I'm uh, satisfied. I would uh, probably need to secure the uh, work coil even better. Foil in place, placing charger, charging to two and a half kilovolt. Removing charger, discharge in, three, two, one. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Shit, that's insane. <laughs> so the test setup was a huge success. Power supply and capacitor bank, trigger mechanism needs to be boxed up in a more nice manner, some better wiring and the Massive amount of current discharge speed a MKP capacitor or foil film capacitor has is just insane. The sound recordings on the camera does unfortunately cut out due to yeah uh, the noise level being too great. But the explosion sound in a confined space in a workshop like this is absolutely insane. That is... You, you can feel the pressure wave in your chest when, when you do the full near 4 kilojoule discharge. That is really something to experience. And we saw we could push the voltage rating a good 25% above the absolute maximum rating of the datasheet. I did expect a bit more from a MKP capacitor, but still did pretty well. But I think I can uh, use this to do some high-speed photography of a long, long-term planned project before the large capacitor bank exploded. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you will uh, learn something. And please do remember that working with capacitor banks at 3 kV DC is extremely dangerous. So I do not encourage working with this unless you are professionally trained. So until next time, see ya.